Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial in our Christmas Swift Tutorials series and today is day four of our to-do application project and we're going to create a cool user interface for our app in this video. So at the moment our prototype UI looks like this and actually I do not want to show you the finished version yet I'd like to go with you through the process of creating that in Adobe Experience Design and you could also use Sketch or anything you like there but I just like you to go with me through that process of creating that and maybe hearing me think a little while I'm doing that uh, maybe this also helps you in the future but before we get started let me mention two things first of all there's still a chance to win in the holiday giveaway 2017 action where my fellow YouTube content creators and content creators for iOS tutorials put together this great bunch of stuff that you can win all you need to do is click on the gleam.io link in the video description below um, the, the winners are going to be drawn on December 25th and all you need to do is go to the bottom and if you subscribe to one or more channels you increase your chance by subscribing to more channels or visiting more websites and then you have a chance to win one of these great prizes um, that you have seen before so you can win uh, three Google Home Mini, a sketch one year license, a lot of great books, um, Swift courses and so on so definitely check that out on gleam.io and subscribe to as many channels as you can can. It really just takes about a few seconds. And uh, what I'd also like to mention is our Slack community that I have created for this channel where we can help each other out with problems and learn about interesting stuff, share interesting things. And um, there are already many people um, who have joined this Slack channel. It's also completely free. You will find the join link in the video description below. And now we're going to get started creating a new user interface. So welcome to this maybe slightly unfamiliar design here, uh, this user interface. We are currently in Adobe Experience Design, but you could also follow along this tutorial in Sketch or in Photoshop or in any other application that you feel familiar with to create a UI design. I have uh, worked a little bit with Adobe Experience Design uh, in the in the past and in the uh, over the beta period, and I really must say that it is a really great and simple tool and you're going to see some of the great features in this tutorial. So I've already opened up uh, uh, Adobe Experience Design and created a new prototype for an iPhone 6, 7, 8. We could also create an iPad template or use a custom size and width um, for the iPhone 10. But what's really great is that they already provide on their launch screen an some shortcuts for UI kits for Apple iOS, for Google Material, or for Windows. And what I'm interested in now is Apple iOS. And if we open that up, then we get a website from Apple where Apple has human interface guidelines and also downloads for Photoshop, for Sketch, and also for Adobe uh, Experience Design. And once I open that up, let me just give you a quick look at that folder. I already downloaded that. We get the fonts that we need. So this is a San Francisco package. And you could install that so that we um, that you also have those fonts on your machine so that we can design this together. And we also have some production templates for app icons, for uh, promotional images, and so on. But we also have UI elements for the standard iPhone models and also for the iPhone 10. I'm going to go with the standard iPhone models for now. And once I open that up, you can see that we get everything we really need to create iOS designs right here. So from keyboards to large titles and so on, everything is already in place for us and we can just reuse that. And we're going to use some of that stuff in a second. So let me just give you a quick 
overview about the Adobe Experience Design user interface. So we have actually two um, areas where we can work. We have a design area and we have a prototype area. And in this prototype area, we are not going to use that. But as you can see in this little demonstration here, this is what it does. You can create designs and prototypes and connect different artboards or different states of your application in the design phase and just test it, how it feels to swipe from one table view to detail view controller and so on without having to create code. And this is really cool. And then we have this design area where we work with artboards. Each artboard, as you can see here, this has the size of an iPhone 6, 7 or 8. And each artboard could be one screen in our application. And I can create artboards with this little icon here on the left pane. And I can select, for example, yet another um, artboard for our application right here, but we're only going to use one artboard for this tutorial. So this is the first thing. Then also what we have here are two um, options that we can work with here. We can choose assets where we can add colors and character styles and symbols which are going to be grouped here in this assets area as soon as we create stuff. And then, we, of course, we have a layer mode here where we can see each layer of our image or of our application that we're going to see that later. And of course, we also have these standard tools like a selection tool, a square, a circle, a line of here for a path or Bezier curve, text and a little um, icon to increase the size or to zoom into our artboard or into our design. And on the right, we can actually just do a lot of configuration with everything like giving a fill color to a rectangle and so on. But now let's get started creating a new user interface for our application after this short um, introduction into experience design. But as I said, if you're familiar with a graphics design tool like Photoshop or Sketch, you can do it there or you can just use any tool that fits your needs. But this is our application's current state. So we have this uh, navigation bar at the top with the plus icon on the top. We have a table view and actually we do not want to change so many things here. But since we are dealing with iOS 11, um, um, I know that iOS 11 uses these large titles and I like those large titles a lot. So what we can do now is maybe instead of this standard navigation uh, bar, I'd like to use such a large title navigation bar in my application. So I'm just selecting the large title here with the cancel and done button. I could also choose just another one that fits my needs. And I'm going to paste that into my application right now into my artboard. And I actually do not need this cancel button. So I'm just getting rid of that right now, selecting this done button here. This would be the right accessory um, in our list here. You can see that this is nicely grouped for us already. And I do not want this to be called large title. I actually want this to be called my list. So this is already pretty cool. And now what I also need is kind of the, my status bar at the top. Let's just see if we can get a status bar right here. And there indeed, there they are. And we have a light color theme and a dark color theme here. And I'd like to use the black version here. So the dark theme, and I'm going to just insert that right on top of my list here. So this already looks like an iOS application. Isn't that cool? So this was the first step. And this is what I like my top to look like. And for our tail view, as you can see, we have this record tutorial wrap gifts go shopping here as to do items, we somehow have to display them as well. And what I'd like to do is simply add some to do items that I've already created, and put them next to or in with the same distance to the left as my list and maybe starting right here also with this distance. And this is what I'd like to, what I'd like my list to look like. And to clean this up a little bit, I'm also going to select that and press Command G on my keyboard to group that together here in my layer list. And then I'm going to rename that to table view because I actually just want this plain and simple list style here. But if we have a look 
at the original version of our application, we had a table view cell with complete, with share, with delete. And I think what I'd like to do is go a little bit more standard on the delete so that we can swipe to delete actually. And what I'd also like to do is share an item by um, by dragging from the right to the left and having that as a second option. And to complete an item, I just want to press it. So no need anymore for these three buttons here. Um, so this is going to simplify our user interface a lot. So how do I go about that? Well, let's go back into our list here and we have some table view actions here already if you have a look at that. And I indeed want two of these actions. So I'm just copying these two actions. Uh, hit Command C, switch over, go back here, Command V, and then I'm already prepared and I can put that to one of my cells here. And this is what I want this to look like. And maybe I'm even putting that into my table view group. So I'm just dragging and dropping that into this group. And then I have my table view put together. And as you can see, this also, uh, experience design also helps me to position that correctly so that this is centered as soon as I put those two, um, those two uh, actions into the same group as my table view. And the last thing that I should do here maybe is rename them. So this is going to be my share action. And this stays the delete action. But the colors at the moment are really standard and not really what I want. So I already thought about two colors that I could use for our application here. And this is this um, light blue here. Looks really cool, I think, together with this yellowish color. And since I've pasted these two forms here now with this color, and we're going to use that a lot, or multiple times at least, we can have a look at this assets section here in the lower left corner that I showed to you right above the layers um, trigger. And once we press on the plus icon here for color, we get this color here now as an asset in this project. And I can do the same thing with my yellowish color and now we can work with these colors. Isn't that cool? So I'm just going to remove um, those two forms. Now I do not need them anymore. But what I can do now is selecting my shape here for my share action and change the, uh, the color of the background and just go with my yellow here or actually this is supposed to be uh, kind of this blue. And for the delete, I do not want this red color. I think maybe um, my yellow color also fits the delete action nicely. So I'm just selecting yellow here and then we have the share and delete. And I actually want to use this color even more. So what I thought about was kind of an indicator that shows us how much of our list we actually accomplished. So I thought about maybe using just a horizontal line here and maybe increasing the size here a little bit. So I'm setting the border to two instead of one. It looks a little uh, stronger and thicker. And I like to change the color also to our blue color. And this is going to be a progress bar that we are going to use. So I'm just putting that right below my list. And this looks something like the list is underlined or kind of a heading. And it also shows us the progress of our um, of our list. So at the moment we would have a progress of zero, but to show in the design what we want, I just increase this progress a little bit. So once we complete more items, this progress view is going to increase its percentage. And once we completed everything, I like this to reach 100% right here. And I think this is just a little nice touch to the heading and a nice feature that we can implement really easily. So if we compare that to our previous design, if we open up uh, this preview image, we already have a lot cooler design going on here in our Adobe Experience Design View as in this screenshot of our application. But we're still missing some things. So we can share, we can complete, we can delete something, but we cannot yet add any new object. And what I like to do here is actually just having one round button here. Um, let's make it kind of that size and I want this to give it a fill color. This is also going to be our blue color and we do not really need a border here. So let's just go with that. And for the size, maybe let's go about 40 by 40. This should be enough. And I'd like to position that somewhere in the lower right corner. 
somewhere around here. And to indicate that this is actually a plus button, we need some text or a plus sign here. And I can press T on my keyboard or select the, um, the text tool here on the left and just click somewhere and add a plus sign here. And I'm going to go with San Francisco Pro Display here as my font with the font weight of semi-bold. And maybe let's increase that a little bit to 36 for the size and position that in the center of our round button here. I think some somewhere here is okay. And then we should also change the color here a little bit, let's say to white. And then we can also select both of them and press Command G, go back into our layer mode here. And this is going to be our plus button or add button. And for the line, this is going to be the progress indicator. And then we have named everything correctly and we have a clean layer guide here. And also that tells us what we are actually dealing with. And the last thing that we really need is somehow a way to trigger the share feature or to actually display um, if we are connected to another device. Because as you remember, we use the multi-peer connectivity framework to actually share to do items with another device nearby. And in our prototype design here on the left, we use the share button here or the action button in the top left corner to um, trigger a action sheet that is placed either to join or to uh, connect to an existing session. And I think that what I'd like to do now is to provide a little bit of more information. So I've selected my text tool again and somewhere in the lower left corner, I'd like to add maybe something like connection and offline and we can't see anything because it was white so let me just quickly change that to a light gray color maybe it shouldn't be that intrusive and i'm going to position that somewhere around here and of course i'm decreasing the size so let's say about 17 this is the standard uh, font size in ios for text and maybe i'd want it even a little less dark, so a little lighter gray color. And for the offline, since this is supposed to become a button, maybe that is a good idea. I can go back to my um, assets here, select the offline and select just another color. And I'd like to use my yellow color here. And our users are going to be able to just press on the offline to um, access the action sheet to either join or host a session. Or once someone presses on the share action, we'll also be able to trigger this same action sheet and join or host a session. And I think that is about it. Maybe position that a little different. This a little bit more down. This also a little bit more to the bottom so that this is somewhere in the center of the text. And I think this looks quite nicely in that way. And this is the design that we are going to use for our application, for our to-do application. So at the moment, it still looks like this in Xcode. And in the next tutorial, we're going to translate this design into a real application um, and try to implement all of the features that we see here at the moment. And one last thing that I'd like to show you today, and this is specific to uh, experience design, this is done without any uh, plugins. Uh, once we press on this share button, we can publish our prototype if you have an Adobe Creative Cloud account. And what this looks like is pretty cool because this is something if you're a designer or if you want to share um, your design with someone, or even if you just want to use your design for development, then using this publish link, we can come here. And as you can see, this is really cool because we can actually see all the colors that we have used in our design. We can also click on one of these elements like our share button. And as you can see here, there is a color. And with one click on that color, this color is copied and we can paste that into Xcode, into our assets folder or something like that. Or we can want to know the distance between um, the edge and our connection button Then I just have to um, draw with my mouse over or to move with my mouse pointer over this position. We see this, this is 15, uh, 14 pixels away from the left border. And this is a really cool feature of experience design. I really like that. And this in, in Sketch, you could do that with this with a plugin called Zeppelin, for example, but we just do not have to if we're using experience design. 
So this was the creation of a better user interface for our to-do application. So from here, we moved to here, and I think this is a pretty huge difference and it looks a lot better. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and do not forget to attend the giveaway action. You will find the Gleam link in the video description down below. And remember, you can win tons of great stuff there. And I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one where we are implementing this design in code.